Excellent idea, Richler. Excellent. When would you suggest the ball be given? Two weeks' time should be sufficient to take care of uh, everything. <laughs> When the ball was announced, I learned of Richelieu's plot. Madame Constance told me everything. Someone must go to London with all haste, Monsieur d'Artagnan. Before 14 days have passed, the casket of 12 diamonds must be returned to Paris. If Her Majesty does not wear them to the ball, all will be lost. Why have you come to me? Surely your husband. I have discovered he is loyal to the Cardinal. You are the only one who can do this. I cannot accomplish this mission alone. For the agents of the Cardinal will undoubtedly attempt to stop anyone who leaves France. But I will ask my friends Athos, Porthos, and Aramis. They share my loyalty to the Queen. God go with you, Monsieur d'Artagnan. At two in the morning, the three musketeers and I left Paris. All night we rode, and near eight in the morning we stopped at the inn in Chantilly. As we sat at breakfast, a stranger proposed a toast to Richelieu. Porthos agreed, if the stranger would drink to the king. The stranger replied that he knew no other king than Richelieu, and drew his sword. We shouted to Porthos to dispatch him as soon as possible and join up with us, and then we were on our way. At Beauvais we waited two hours, but when Porthos did not appear, we continued. We were hardly out of sight of Beauvais when we were trapped in an ambush. Aramis received a shoulder wound, and we were able to escape from the ambush. For two hours, we galloped toward Calais. But at Crave Coeur, Aramis, faint from the loss of blood, could go no farther. So it was only Athos and I who spurred on our horses. At midnight, we reached the inn at Amiens, where we intended to rest until daylight. But at four o'clock, we heard a great noise in the stable. When we rushed down to see what it was, four men, armed to the teeth, lunged out of the shadows at us. As Athos told them off, I took to my horse. Though four of us had set out from Paris, it was only I who sped along the last remaining miles to Calais. But when I reached Calais, one more obstacle lay before me. No one could leave France without a permit signed by Richelieu. After some persuasion, aided greatly by my sword, I convinced a gentleman that I should take his permit and his place for the boat trip across the channel. When I finally reached the Duke of Buckingham's castle in London, I explained to him the danger in which the Queen had placed herself by her indiscretion in giving him the diamonds and the urgent need for returning them to her without delay. But when the Duke gave me the little rosewood casket, he discovered there were only ten diamonds. Two were missing. They had to be replaced before I returned to Paris, and time was getting short. Wasting no time, the Duke summoned his jeweler and instructed him to make two diamonds like the others. Within two days, I was on my way back to France with a box containing 12 perfectly matched diamonds. Once back in Paris, I hurried toward the Hotel de Ville, where the ball was even then in progress. I prayed that I would be in time. I would have prayed harder had I known that as I neared the hotel, Richler was engaged in conversation with the king. A most magnificent ball, Majesty. Most magnificent. Her Majesty has not yet arrived. She's sent word she's been delayed. No doubt she wishes to appear at her best. I suggest, Majesty, that when the Queen arrives, you give her leave. Diamonds? What do they mean? Nothing, Majesty. But if she should be wearing the diamonds you gave her, I suggest that you count them. If there are only ten, ask her who could have taken these two. I do not understand what... I beg your forgiveness, Louis, but I had some difficulty with my wig. Your eminence. Your majesty. I see you wear the diamonds, madam. Are there not two missing? Two missing? Why, no, my lord. As you can see, I wear all twelve. Oh, so you do, madam. Monsieur, what does this mean? It means that uh, I wish to present these two diamonds to a most beautiful and clever queen. I am most touched by your generosity, Your Eminence. Shall we dance, Louis? Louis? 
so it was that Cardinal Richelieu's plot was thwarted, and the queen was saved. I hasten to add that Athos, Porthos, and Aramis returned safely to Paris. A few more souvenirs of combat added to their collection, and in time I was accepted as a musketeer. Perhaps one day I shall tell you of another adventure of the musketeers, for we had many. And through them all, we did not forget the pledge we made when first we met. All for one, and one for all!